help you to know something is about the Chinese experience in Chicago, how we got to the and you are all from San Francisco? Yes. Thanks to San Francisco. And uh, what I learned about the San Francisco kids, they all speak very good Chinese, they read Chinese. They're, okay, they're that's smart. Good. They're smarter than our kids. Um, <laughs> I will not I'm, say I'm, I'm something just like that. that. I'm not going to say it later, they're very smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so great to see young people actually taking a very strong stance and being interested in one issues that pertain to equity issues that impact your community and actually being involved and engaged in that and actually trying to move us forward together because it's going to take every voice young and seasoned to make sure that we get the things that we need to get um, as a people 1986 a young man by the name of Barack Obama actually came here and was the first executive director and incorporated developing communities projects. Organizing is one of the most powerful tools at our disposal as people to get things done and to get things done the way that will impact and improve communities. These protected bike lanes, if you notice, they're up against the curb. And then we put the parked cars, that's a row of parked cars out off the curb. So when you're riding your bike, you're not protected. You can only walk three or four blocks in five minutes. The 1920s was like a really, this neighborhood was like the spot to be. It was like bustling, you know, like there was a lot of good. Um, there was a lot of like development, economic development that was happening, so this was kind of considered an entertainment district. So it's been considered one of the best in Chicago. Um, graffiti art-wise, Justin Gray is considered one of the legends in the neighborhood. But they're all they all taught young people how to do graffiti art. Um, they made murals at multiple locations, and they taught people to dance here and MC and DJ. So yeah, you all feel free to walk through. This is. The <laughs> almost most corners of Chicago, they have something called pods. It's a police observation devices, and basically police can watch like, the streets from inside the vehicles. Uh, it's kind of like uh, Chicago Police TV, and uh, there's a lot of money. Um, when it first came out, they put them in places that are considered dangerous. And so um, what that meant is that. If you had a camera in your neighborhood, that meant that you know, it's a dangerous neighborhood. And that's what it implied. And a lot of people would be afraid of walking around your neighborhood because they see that. And a lot of the community <laughs> members complain because it's a blue light flashing every night in front of their house. It's like we're constantly at war. Uh, and they spent a lot of money towards that. Uh, but yet we didn't have enough money for education. There was budget cuts. Uh, Nonprofits also got budget cuts. Uh, there was a lot of protests that year too. Uh, trying to get fund money. And that's what they are. But, Thank you for riding the CTA Blue Line. The reason why I wanted to go to Chicago was because I wanted to explore something new, learn about their transportation, and also bring it back to San Francisco. Something that I would take away from Chicago would be their uh, estimated arrival time for their buses, because most, well, actually, all of them are actually kind of accurate, but ours is kind of. Not, not so accurate and when it's like five minutes you actually wait for like 10 minutes or like even more 20 minutes and when it's in, in Chicago when they say it's like two minutes actually it, the bus actually arrives in two minutes. I've heard this, this experience taught me that um, we should fight for what we are 
what we believe to be right because we visited the Chinatown that we feel and the, the woman that inside that in, introduced us to the whole museum told us that actually they did not fight for what they believe like like what they want like the uh, the Chinatown Park and Chinatown Library well it because it takes like uh, 40 years for them to fight for before they actually get it so in my mind it tells, it tells me that if you don't fight for what you want or what you believe in the thing that you hope for will not actually happen in the future Something that I would take away from Chicago would be Chinatown history. And the reason why I take away the history in Chicago was because I want to compare our Chinatown in San Francisco history <laughs> and the <Blue> history. <laughs> I feel this trip taught me that having connections even from anywhere in the city, country or anywhere in the world actually help you achieve your own goals in your community. Something that I would take away from Chicago would be the biking friendly. Like Chicago, they have um, special routes for bikers to bike and they have safety, they have a safety area for bikers to ride on the street even with the pedestrians and the cars. That's why I like their system, the biking system. After this trip, I gained a, a stronger bond with my friends because I have a horrible sense of direction without that I was lost <laughs> that I The reason why I wanted to go to Chicago was because I wanted to explore the Chinatown there and compare it back with our Chinatown and see what, what's the difference between their living conditions and our living conditions 